Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question 7 which is a 50 mark question on area and volume and calculus. So we're shown a regular piece of cardboard that's to be used to construct a box with an open top as is also shown. The sheet of cardboard is 20 centimeters in length and 12 centimeters in width. So by cutting out equal squares of side x at each corner and then folding up the sides the box is formed as in the figure below. So now part A of the question which is worth 5 marks wants us to write the length, breadth and height of the box in terms of x. And remember breadth is just another word for width. So first of all we work out the length and the length is this side here. So we know that the length of that pink line as well as these two smaller yellow lines will be equal to 20. However, we don't need those two smaller yellow lines, so we're going to take those away from 20, and we know that each of those yellow lines is going to be x centimeters, so therefore the length is going to be 20 minus x minus x or 20 minus 2x. And now let's break out the width. So the width is that pink line there. Again, we don't need these two smaller yellow lines either side of the pink line. As when it's folded up, we only have that pink line there as the breadth or the width. So it's going to be 12 minus both of those yellow lines. And once again, the yellow lines are going to be equal to x centimeters each. So it's going to be 12 minus x minus x or 12 minus 2x. And finally, the height will actually be equal to those smaller yellow lines. So either here or here, but they're equal on all the sides. So this is going to be equal to this as well. And this and this. So each individual yellow line is x centimeters so therefore the height will be x centimeters so h is equal to x so that's our answer for part a of the question and now we're going to have a look at part b which is worth 10 marks so part b wants us to show that the volume is v is equal to 4x cubed minus 64x squared plus 240x so remember the volume of a box and the box is in the shape of a cuboid is going to be length by breadth by height so in our case here that's going to be v is equal to 20 minus 2x by 12 minus 2x by x so first of all, I'm going to multiply 20 minus 2x by 12 minus 2x, and that's going to give me 4x squared minus 64x plus 240. But don't forget, we still have to multiply all of that by x. So multiplying that by x, we get 4x cubed minus 64x squared plus 240x. So there we have it. We've shown that the volume of the box is equal to 4x cubed minus 64x squared plus 240x. And that's our answer for part B. And now we're going to have a look at part C of the question, which is also worth 10 marks. So this says to use calculus to find the value of x which gives the maximum volume of the box. So to find the maximum volume of the box we're going to get the derivative so that's going to be dv dx and we're going to put that equal to zero and then solve for the x value. We may get two values for x and then to find out which is the minimum and which is the maximum we get the second derivative and if it's greater than zero that means it's the minimum and if it's smaller than zero that means it's the maximum. I'll explain it more later. So remember a rule for differentiation if we have a function that's y is equal to x to the power of n then to differentiate that with respect to x, it's going to be n times by x to the power of n minus 1. So basically we multiply the power by the term and then reduce the power by 1. And then we get dv dx is equal to 12x squared minus 128x plus 240. So now we have to put this equal to 0 and solve for x. To make it easier for us, I'm going to divide everything by 4. And dividing everything by 4, we get 3x squared minus 32x plus 60 is equal to 0. And now to solve this, we're going to use the quadratic formula. It's on page 20 of your formula and tables book, which you might be familiar with it by now. So it's the very first formula here at the top of the page. Minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So now let's work out our a, b and c, pop them into the formula and work out our two values of x. So our a here is going to be 3 or b is going to be minus 32 and our c is going to be 60. So popping those into the formula we're going to get x is equal to 32 plus minus the square root of minus 32 squared minus 4 by 3 by 60 all over 2 by 3. So it's plus 32 as we had minus minus 32 which is plus 32. So this gives us 32 plus the square root of 304 over 6 and 32 minus the square root of 304 over 6. So let's use our calculator now to work out the two values. So we get 8.23926562, but correct to three significant figures, we get 8.24. And then let's do 32 minus the square root of 304 over 6. And this gives us 2.427400704. And correct to three significant figures, that's 2.43. And of course, both of those are in centimeters. So now we have two values for x. One is the min and which is the max. To work out which is the min and which is the max, I'm just going to differentiate the function again and then pop in each value of x into that second derivative. If the answer we get is smaller than zero, that means it's a max. And if it's bigger than zero, that means it's a minimum. So first of all, let me work out the second derivative. So in other words, I'm just going to differentiate the function again. And that's going to be equal to 24x minus 128. Just be careful that there that there is a mistake in the marking scheme, which has 36, but that is actually supposed to be 24. And now we put in both values for x. So if we say that x is equal to 8.24, let's see what we get. So we get 69.76, which is obviously bigger than zero, which means that the 8.24 is a min. And I will say that when x is equal to 2.43, and let's see what we get. 
and that gives us minus 69.68. This is obviously smaller than zero, which means that x equal to 2.43 centimeters will give us the maximum volume. So that's your answer for part C of the question, and now we're gonna look at part D, which is also worth 10 marks. So this says, using the value of x from part C, find the maximum volume of the box correct to three significant figures. So our value of x from part C was 2.43, and our formula or our function for the volume is 4x cubed minus 64x squared plus 240x. So now we need to put in 2.43 for x and see what we get. And we can pop this into our calculator to work this out. So 4 by 2.43 cubed minus 64 by 2.43 squared plus 240 by 2.43. That gives us 262.682028. But correct to three significant figures, that's going to be 263 centimeters cubed. And that's our answer for part D of the question. And now let's have a look at part E, which is worth five marks. So this says that students wish to plot the graph of the function V of X. They're wondering what domain they should use. And now we're asked to write the domain that the students should use in the form A is smaller than X, which is smaller than B, where A and B are both real numbers. We also have to explain why we choose those values. So we have the length, breadth, and height all in terms of X. We know that these values must be greater than zero as you can't have a side length that's smaller than zero. So we're gonna put all of these greater than zero and that should give us our domain for X. So our length is 20 minus two X. So we know that that has to be greater than zero. Our width is 12 minus two X. And again, that has to be greater than zero. And finally, our height has to be greater than zero and our height is just X. So therefore X greater than zero. So now we have to solve the first two inequalities. The third one there for height is already solved. So I'm gonna solve the first two so 20 minus 2x greater than 0 is going to give us minus 2x is greater than minus 20. And now dividing both sides by minus 2, I have to change the sign as I'm dividing by a minus number. So it's going to be x is smaller than 10. So don't forget to change the sign when you divide by a minus number. And now we're going to do the one for width in the middle. So 12 minus 2x is greater than 0 will become minus 2x is greater than minus 12. Again, same principle applies. I'm going to divide by minus 2 and change the sign, which will give me x is smaller than 6. So I have x smaller than 10, x smaller than 6, and x greater than 0. So therefore, our domain is going to be x is greater than than zero but smaller than six. We don't need to use the 10 as six is obviously smaller than 10. So we know that X cannot be greater than six, which means that our domain is just between zero and six. So that's our answer for part E of the question. And now we're gonna have a look at part F, which is worth 10 marks. So this says, use suitable scales for the axis, draw the function V of X in the domain described in part E of the question. So we know our domain is gonna be from zero to six. We can mark those in on the X axis. And we're gonna mark the Y axis in intervals of 50. So we're gonna go from zero to 50 to 100 to 150 to 200 to 250 to 300. So now to plot the function, we're gonna graph the table on the calculator. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. If you don't know how to do this, I recommend following me along on the video. So click menu and then three, and then pop in your function. So in our case here, the function is four X cubed minus 64 X squared plus 240 X. We're starting at zero. Remember our domain is from zero to six and we're ending at six and the step will be one. This now will give us our points. So we have zero, zero, one, 180, two, 256, three, 252, four, 192, five, 100 and six, zero. So now we to plot these points on the graph and draw in our function. So zero, zero, one, 180, two, 256, three, 252, four, 192, five, 100 and six, zero. So now there are points. Now we just have to connect those points to draw in our graph. So your graph should look something like that. So that's our answer for part F of the question, which was the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.